trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Hello and welcome to episode 54 of the Tower Book Club. I'm Chris and this is Paris. Hello. We have a special guest today to guide us through the world of self-defense and martial arts. Please welcome Paul. Hello. Um, if this is your first time listening to the show, what we do here at Terrible Book Club is read books that we assume will be bad based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination thereof. So we're forcing ourselves to read books that we would otherwise choose to read, not choose to read, in our regular day-to-day -day lives, usually this experiment results in a hilariously disappointing read, but once in a great while, a book comes along that at least partially subverts our assumptions. I don't think that happened this time, because this time we read uh, 101 Weapons for Women, Implement Weaponry, a Unique Concept in Women's Self-Defense by Rodney R. Rice. And is is it really that unique, you guys? Yeah, apparently thinking to like pick up a fucking table and use it to hit somebody is unique. I don't, I don't think it is. Uh, but this was 1991. This was a different world, you know. Wait, was there a table involved in any of this? See, yes, remember the know. small Ikea-like table that the woman oh, used to put oh, distance? I thought you meant like a full, like, oak table. Like, no. Like, you know, like a full, like that one that they have in uh, Game of Thrones that Stannis has. So it's like the map of Westeros. Just <laughs> use that whole thing. No. I mean, if we're, it, it, you, it's supposed to be improvised weaponry, right? Right, right. Yeah, I, I tell you now that if this was a manual on how to become the hardcore champion of the WWE, it would be much more useful. Tables, see, when chairs, I, ladders, When I think chains. 101 weapons for women, I usually go by video game rules, and usually that means, you know, like whips, daggers, pretty much exclusively feminine weapons, but that's not the case here. Rodney Rice wants you to use whatever you can find around you to murder the shit out of your attacker. Yeah, um, before we get too far into this, just a brief content warning. We will be talking about violence against women and rape throughout the entire episode. So please exit now if these are topics that make you uncomfortable. So uh, the back of the book <clears throat> is simply, simply thus. What if you suddenly found yourself the victim of a criminal assault? Learn to stop an attack instantly by using the techniques of the natural defense of implement weaponry. Find out how you are actually armed at all times with deadly weapons, no matter where you are or what you are doing. Over 200 action photographs depict the most shocking and effective attack deterrence ever shown. I guarantee after you read this book that you will never again wonder what you might do to defend yourself in the face of an attack. So already, this book is setting the bar real fucking high. <laughs> Yeah, like it, he says, it's a unique concept. These these photos are showing shocking things that you never would have considered before. Believe me, you never would have thought to throw a pencil at a guy or yeah. use your foot. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's. I mean, like some of the things in the book are things that I wouldn't have thought of, but probably just because they're incredibly dumb and wouldn't work, not because they were like a good idea in any way. So it depends on what you mean by work. Uh, actually deter an attack is what I mean by work. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good bar to right. have. Um, and so, so that was the back of the book. I also want to read the dedication at the front of the book and the acknowledgments at the front, just so you kind of get an idea of who this guy is and why this book was written and sort of the tone that we get through the book. Uh, so again, 1991, <clears throat> the dedication reads, this book is dedicated to those women who have become unfortunate victims of abuse, assault, abduction, and rape. Hopefully, the research, development, and overall knowledge in this book will help prevent many of these crimes from occurring and will also relieve some of the anxiety and fear that so many women suffer because of them. So, clearly, the author 
wrote this to be helpful, clearly cares about, you know, a, you know, women getting assaulted, abused, etc. It's well-intentioned, for well sure. Well-intentioned, yeah, well-intentioned. Um, But then the acknowledgement section and then the first part of the book kind of start to make you wonder exactly who this man is and, like, what his deal is. Um, <clears throat> the acknowledgements say, This book is the result of the imagination and creativity of martial artists who are concerned for women and their ability to effectively defend themselves. The author and publisher would like to thank the contributors for their time and energy given to the development of this much-needed concept of self-defense. The material in this book depicts an extremely controversial subject, which is... What should a woman really do to defend herself? Many of these techniques may be considered deadly. Some may even appear ridiculous. But the general opinion of the many people involved in this work has been very encouraging and optimistic regarding the subject. Without their approval, this book would not have been printed. First of all, dude, why is it controversial to think about how a woman would defend herself? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I think he's saying should they go so far as to kill? Which, if you're being attacked, uh, I mean, it's not... It's reasonable in a way. Dep depends on what U.S. state you live in, perhaps. <laughs> I get, yeah, you know, stand your ground and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Paul, do you have anything to say about this as a practitioner of martial arts? Yeah, I've been flipping through this book for the first time just now. And uh, just as you said, uh, many of these techniques may be considered deadly. I got to the page where you are attacking somebody with a spiral notebook and you are <laughs> scraping the spiral <laughs> yep. binding across their face. Like, that's going to be anything more than slightly annoying or uncomfortable. <laughs> I th I think what the, he actually wants you to do is to unwind the binding to oh, use yeah, that's, as... Oh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> well, th that's, th that's the uh, following two pictures where they have unwound the spiral uh, <laughs> of the notebook, and they are using it uh, to strangle a man <laughs> and stab him in the <laughs> eyes. This goes beyond self-defense and goes to premeditated improvised murder? <laughs> yeah. What? I, yeah, um... So we didn't, we started talking about the book. I should probably mention that Paul is here with us today because he has uh, practiced martial arts for most of his life, uh, specifically Muay Thai and MMA, and he now works um, at Siyotong, which is a very reputable and um, cool guy MMA place, I guess. <laughs> Only cool <laughs> guys are would... allowed there? Uh, sorry? Only cool guys are allowed there? What yeah. if I'm really uncool and want to be an uncool MMA guy? I mean, you can also go there if you're an uncool MMA guy or gal. Do we um, actually get rid of uncool folks, but our definition of cool is pretty loose. Yeah, I was, I was being silly, but... If uh, I walk in with a tap-out shirt, what happens? Oh. They're gone. Okay. <laughs> oh, just the shirt is gone. Oh, well, I guess I better get ready for the... It's uh, just getting but, loose. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so Paul works in a, you know, professional martial arts setting, and they have plenty of women that are fighters. So it is weird that this book stands on the premise of like, women cannot learn martial arts and they must use things like pencils and their bracelets to defend themselves. And it's kind of a weird place to start, right? Like I, I would be more okay with it if he acknowledged that like, yes, some people are going to learn martial arts, but this is just if, you know, if maybe you don't. But he directly states in the book at one point that um, women don't have the will or time to learn martial <laughs> arts. Uh, he says, oh, very few women possess the time or dedication required to obtain such skill. The dedication part there is like really uh, like, why wouldn't a woman have dedication? Yeah. Uh, what exactly makes men more able to have the dedication to learn martial arts? Time or, or time? Like, I'm confused about this. It isn't like, not have the especially like the even warrior. motherly love considered like some of the most dedicated stuff in the world, even by like misogynists. Yeah, I I mean, my comment to that was simply fuck off. Like, I, just read <laughs> I mean, there's that. that too, but I'm just saying even from their angle... I'm, I'm I'm sure that's not what this guy is. He thinks he's being well-meaning, but like the tone, the tonality of some of the stuff being like, oh, they can't, they don't have the dedication to be able to figure out how to do like a throw or something. Or yeah, like, like a fuck, simple throw reversal you, or something. Fuck you, dude. Plenty of women study martial arts and are great at them. So I like, this is dumb. I hate this. This fucking fool has three pages worth of 
paper products as improvised weapons, playing oh. cards, photographs. <laughs> oh, 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 the playing card, oh, the gambit shit that he, he tries to get you to believe in? Charge yeah. up a playing card with some kinetic energy and have a Cajun <laughs> accent and you'll have no problems anymore. Yes. Um, in fact, you'll probably be the this attacker picture in that is case. murder. This is not self-defense. This dude is driving. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, is, there is a picture of a woman choking a man with a seatbelt while he's driving, and he looks like he's very surprised. <laughs> like, a oh, lot, lady, uh, what? A lot of the photos of this are pretty good, but don't necessarily show the uh, appropriate emotion from the receiver right. of the implement weaponry, I would say. Usually it looks like a combination of annoyance or surprise or perhaps worry. But never really, like, yeah, we, physical pain. We didn't do a really good job of explaining this, but the, the book is mostly pictures, and it's split up into several sections. And, like, like Paul mentioned, there's, like, a paper product section. There's another one that's, like, jewelry. And, like, the, the thing that drives me insane about the sections is that he ends with body parts. He ends yeah, with telling you how to use your hands and feet. That's and like, probably the hugest sin of this whole book. Yeah, a like, book which that... I consider... Mostly to be a formatting and, like, organization problem more than, like, an intention and content problem. A little uh, bit of a content problem. Yeah, I was gonna but... say, the intention is, like, intention is good, but the tone is shitty and victim blamey, uh, which I'm gonna actually explain that in a, mi in a minute. So, the book is mostly these images and sections that are, like... Use a playing card to slice someone's wrist open, and there's a picture. And yes, that is literally a suggestion. How about dental um, floss dental to, to floss slice a wrist as a garret? Yeah. Um, but the beginning of the book is like, "Hey, we're gonna educate you a little bit about like date rape and abuse in the home and robbery and how you know how common these things are and how you need to be alert." Um, right at the very beginning, there is a quiz oh, called "The Quiz." Are you a target? Take this quiz to determine if you might be a vulnerable target. And now we all took it. I forced all of us to take this quiz. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the quiz itself, I get, you know, the questions aren't necessarily totally out there. It's really the scoring system oh, yeah, at the, the end <laughs> that is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, it takes like 10 minutes to score yourself on this quiz. Because, um, okay, so the quiz is set up like kind of multiple choice. Some of them have like A, B, C, or D as an answer. Some of them have yes, no. Some of them have disagree slash agree. But at, for no number, there is no consistent scoring system from one question to the next. So for like the first question, it's like A is worth a point. B is worth two points. And C is worth zero points. For the next question, you give yourself one point for every yes. For the next question, it's like, give yourself a point if you said yes on A, D, yeah, or E. Yeah, but it's... also, don't give yourself a point if you said yes on C or E or something like that. Yeah, so you're, so so you're constantly so flipping back and forth. I felt like I was taking the fucking SATs while I was trying to take this little <laughs> quiz. It was so dumb. Um, but Paul and I scored... Uh, we 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 scored like the the best I guess you could uh, score, but and I think Chris I think you were also like up there. Uh, but... I got like a thirteen, which is medium range. It's only because I didn't bought. There was one question that was like list how many things you do to protect yourself every day and i just kind of didn't really bother to think that hard about stuff that i do so i just gave myself a zero there well, yeah I didn't because feel like... also because you're a man and you don't have to think about things like that no i do i you no, know i, I don't i don't wear headphones when i'm walking alone at dark i look over oh, my shoulder true. every few seconds i make sure i'm staying in like well-lit areas i do some things yeah yeah uh so yeah those are those are some things but um yeah the first question though is like telling of of this is kind of one of the things that uh sets the tone like i was saying which one statement best describes your dress code a i prefer a more classic or traditional image b i like to be comfortable with room to move c i look better in clothes which show my figure and guess what if you choose c you automatically end up being at high risk because this because book, you are asking for it. Yep, this book thinks that you are asking for it. So uh, this book asserts a few times that if you wear clothes that conform to your shape or perhaps are shorter or have a lower cut, that you are putting yourself at risk of sexual assault. And Maybe I'm... if you're wearing some of that jewelry, too. But wait, that can be used as a protection device, too. <laughs> I'm getting mixed messages here. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, it's been proven that the clothing a woman wears has nothing to do with them being assaulted. 
uh there were there was a i wish i could remember um where exactly but there was this sort of i want to say art installation but not really where uh women had all of their the clothes that they were wearing when they were assaulted um in this gallery and like almost none of it was sexy like none of it was like conforming or sexy i mean people get assaulted in their gym clothes when they're you know in sweats when in their business clothes in jeans like you wearing uh, sexy clothing does not increase your risk of sexual assault and- to counter a little bit paris some people would consider gym wear or business wear sexy so you, there's sure, no sure. winning honestly there's no honestly there's no winning so no. the question but, is pointless okay so that being said like i think it does so a, as a woman who wears generally conforming clothing i will say it does increase the risk that people will yell shit at you but not that people will like physically assault you uh at least in my like anecdotal experience i do find myself and it sucks because like i don't i don't want to think this way but you know, if I know I'm going to be coming home late, I'll bring, like, an extra pair of leggings with me for later when I'm coming home, you know, if I'm by myself, so that I'm not, so that I'm not walking around, like, with just a skirt and, you know, shoes or whatever. Showing um, those ankles and everyone gets all uppity yeah. and no, then like, you have to throw a pen at someone or an entire <laughs> table. Perhaps if you have some Vicks on you, also a weapon. Yeah, right. Well, we'll I don't know if you knew this, Paris, but there's a part in the book where it says use some analgesic rub on him because like you're at the gym or something and you got your Vicks on you for some reason. So just rub it into his chest a little bit and it'll relieve his cough and he'll be surprised. And I guess <laughs> no, no. The suggestion was to rub it into his dick because he was like, <laughs> he was like, if any, like if any of you are young men reading this, you'd know. Ha ha. I guess I guess in the eighties or nineties, like while you're being attacked, be like, okay, oh wait, hold on, I'll I'll make it better. Hold on, let me just get yeah, some right. of my. <laughs> yeah, like who has time to be like, oh, let me reach into my bag, unscrew this cream, put it on my hand, and then target an area. Like that's so unrealistic. To target the dick and not the eyes. What an interesting design decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The eyes are clearly the better choice. That's very true. Paul makes a good point. He, he wants you to go for the eyes a lot, but especially with things that aren't like necessarily gougy. There's a lot of eye gouging, to be sure, happening in this book. But then some of the stuff like the dental floss over the eyes. Not over the neck. That's mentioned too, but the dental floss over the eyes is apparently a move you can do. Not the mentholated ointment in your eyes. Put that on his dick. I think this guy's <laughs> working through something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but we, we're getting a little. But anyway, I was I was just trying to make a point that like, even though the clothing that you wear doesn't doesn't make you more likely to be assaulted, as a woman. It does, like I said, it does make people more likely to say shit at you at times, at least in my own experience. And so I find myself succumbing to these, like, terrible uh, ideas that have become normalized that, like, oh, if you go out in a sexy dress, you should bring a long coat with you to cover up. He actually recommends that. Rodney Rice recommends that in the book. And at first I was like, fuck you, man. And then I was like, oh, I've done that before. God damn it. Like, like it's it's so shitty how you, you're conditioned uh you're conditioned to fear and to look like you're doing the best you can to prevent an assault even though it's not my fucking problem if somebody tries to assault me that's not my fucking fault that's that asshole assaulting me and it has nothing to do with how short my skirt is or how high my heels are or whatever um but it's really hard to let go of that idea because it's so ingrained in our society here in the US and you know in the western actually I would say in most of the world in general. Yeah, I'm not even going to yeah. say Western or, or Eastern or you, whatever. You, you don't have to really limit it that much. No. Um, and yeah, so it sucks because I know that that is not correct. I know that that's just an expectation uh, placed on me by a society that refuses to accept reality and the truth of uh, assault in the U.S., but it's just it's just hard not not to do it not to be like oh i should bring some extra leggings with me oh i should bring a long coat or like i mean i I guess i guess the logic would be that like yes it's shitty but you could do everything you should to protect yourself if possible but but, But you just said that but the point is that it doesn't even really help in the clothing right it doesn't help it just makes you it just makes people maybe blame you less as a victim which is shitty so yeah uh, that that was my piece on that, but um, 
like one of my main issues with these techniques is that they techniques all... Paris? These... Do you re- would you really call them go so far as to call these <laughs> techniques? Probably not. Paul Paul would probably also hate that I'm calling them techniques. I mean, it implies that you practice them and this guy has clearly never practiced a day in his life. Oh, by the way, this man claims to be a master instructor of question mark he doesn't tell us what martial art that he is a there's a really instructor. cool picture of him on the, about the author of him in like a karate gi so you know he's practicing something he's got a black belt on there is a singular mention somewhere in here of show taekwondo. me this guy's picture again. taekwondo uh there's a singular mention of taekwondo so I think that he is uh, Taekwondo. Yeah, but ladies can't learn it? that. You can't no, use no, your no. legs to defend mm-hmm. yourself. Wait, you could use your foot, but I guess here. the whole kick is too out of the question. Yeah, isn't Taekwondo just kicking? It's not just kicking. I'm, I'm actually a yellow stripe in Taekwondo, Paris. So <laughs> oh, yeah? Taekwondo not, even a, not even a yellow belt, Korean. but, you know, I, I took a couple classes. Uh, um, pa- it's, Paul it's, says it's fake Korean karate, so I'm going to agree yeah, with you. Yeah. It's it was mostly his response to... Uh, karate when it came to getting involved in the olympics and it's basically just the same thing but the scoring system is different really i thought it was much more kick focused at least that's what tekken told me and that one oh, you it know, is more couple months of classes because like... those score more points oh okay well... yeah wait isn't isn't this a sport where they're like watching the olympic version of it is just watching people try to kick each other in the head the whole time yeah pretty much <laughs> i mean that sounds fun to be honest with you yeah, just having your hands down by your your hams, your hams down by <laughs> your little hams, your little hams, your little slappy hams. Olympic taekwondo in which you have to balance two hams in your hands, so was... you're not using them to defend yourself, and you can only use your feet to to attack or defend. A tie ham do, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say having just, I was like, oh, it sounds fun to you to just have your hands by your side and just kicking outward with your feet. That seems pretty stupid. I'm looking at this guy posing right now. He's, he looks like he's wearing some kind of medal around his neck, and he's doing like this stance that no one has ever used in a combat sport ever <laughs> that metal like around his neck is an implement weapon away. paul he can use it at a second's notice to fend off attackers yeah he could take his belt off uh, in 35 seconds and try to s- strike me in the eyes with it <laughs> <laughs> okay i think we should talk about how the uh, the book is divided up now the sections if i'm remembering right because i don't have the book in front of me like you two do i, I actually I actually didn't even get to finish my thought because you oh, guys so harped on me about using the word techniques. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then, then I started looking at the guy and yeah. I was like, oh, my God, this and guy. You should see him. Paul is just slowly filling with rage. Um, So my main issue with these suggestions, there you go, um, is that they assume that your hands are going to be free and that you have freedom of movement. And I was like... No, like, no. Most of the time, if someone is attacking you, the first thing they're going to do is immobilize you. So I really feel like most of this is only useful if you know someone is going to, like, if you know right before someone is going to attack you, like, if you suspect they're about to attack you or something, or if they're like... They they took that left too early into a weird spot, or... (laughs) Yeah, like, or if someone is actively lunging at you from, I don't know, several yards away, and you're like, oh, I have time to open my purse, take out this makeup, uh, rustle it, and blow it into his <laughs> eyes by the time he runs here. Like, I, just the <laughs> timing on a lot of this stuff is... Just he does doesn't... talk about, like, setting it up so that, like, at first you're going along with it, and then, like, finding your opportunity for surprise... But then a lot of the yeah. stuff that he wants you to use wouldn't really be a great first attack, and <laughs> you would probably like be immediately right. overpowered after that. And of uh, course, the the, the I... sin of like not starting out with like throw or grapple reversals. I'm sorry. Can I just interject here real quick? The idea of a fashion ninja who has fucking makeup smoke bombs just at the ready. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? You're like, oh, they see them coming like Frankenstein from 20 feet away and they start <laughs> yeah. rustling around in their makeup kit. Well, no, I because, believe... because he suggests that you use um, uh, powder makeup as, like, dust to blow into an attacker's eyes. <laughs> There's also like... a point where he suggests using a lipstick brush as a weapon, which I really don't think is going to do much Dude, in any way guy... you use it. Rodney Rice thinks everything can pierce a human's flesh. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's thinks, true. He thinks lipstick tubes are sharp enough to pierce your heart he thinks fucking keys are sharp enough to pierce your heart and my you favorite think so, uh, oh uh, what's your favorite so, so hey one. everyone what do you think st- 
straws were made of in 1991. <laughs> Does anyone know if they were made of like stainless, like sharp steel? Because razor straws. Because he, the author, tells you that you can use a straw to pierce someone's heart, and it's like, dude, bro, a straw is gonna crumble the second it comes <laughs> into contact with anyone. Like. My favorite part is there's a picture of in the hand section. I think it's in the hand section because this thing is formatted weird, but it's uh, it's it's your fingernails. There's a picture <laughs> of someone like using like a, a almost like a karate chop style, but like going forward with the nails into someone's throat. There's no blood or anything, but it's implied that your nails will stab into someone's throat. I don't know what kind of fucking nails you got, but I... I really don't think they can pierce flesh unless you have, like, the sharpest stilettos possible yeah. that have been cured over with enough, like, nail polish to, like, make them stiff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, fancy lady nails can get pretty fucking stupid, long, and sharp, and, like, pretty um solid because they're built... A lot of the time, they're built up with, like, several layers of this, like, chitinous gel shit that hardens. I don't fucking... Weird nail shit. I don't know. I'm not one of those ladies, so I can't talk in detail about it, but... Um, I, I mean, yeah, you would have to have sharpened them specifically for the purpose of stabbing. Like, you would have had to, like... This is some that picture sh- should have had a stiletto nail with, like, blood gushing from the neck. But it just looks like they kind of poked him with, like, a, a, a hand. That's the- Yeah, like, like sure, that's annoying. But, like, if somebody <laughs> really wants to attack you, they're just going to keep attacking you. I, I, I don't know. Oh, that's right. I... I uh, I found my other my other note my other evidence for him being a uh, misogynistic piece of trash. He says, "As I instructed grappling and releasing techniques, manipulating the hands and wrists, I noticed that as usual, the ladies had a difficult time understanding and performing the techniques." And again, my note was "fuck off" in all <laughs> caps. I was so fucking annoyed. Like, I just I just he kind of has this. You know those like those like creepy like nice guys online who are like, oh, I just want to like help you out and stuff. I want to protect but... you with my karate and weapon implement knowledge. Yeah, my except, lady. Yeah, but then I'm I'm just gonna still be shitty and not think women are actually independent, uh, equal human beings. So he could have he could have even back, come at it from the angle. You just stay over there and look pretty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He could have even come at it from the angle that, like, women in general will be less physically strong in the upper body than men. Yeah. So maybe there's some techniques you could use to, like, take advantage of that or, like, you know, play against that or something. But straight up just saying, like, ah, oh, they can't even understand how to throw, man, yeah, these like, ladies, like, let me tell like, you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and be like, women and men are perfectly equivalent. Like, obviously, there are some basic general biological differences we're not going to get into it because i'm sure i'm sure we're gonna get fucking hate mail for just even saying that but um yeah like you said you know women in general have less upper body strength again a generalization please yeah, do not there's specific, do not there's at specific me. cases there's specific cases where absolutely they are stronger than men but in averagely speaking this is why you need like grapple and hold reversals in this book not just fucking hey what's in your purse just throw that shit i'm surprised it wasn't an entry because it was a purse items entry that was the first thing in the book in fact yeah before he even teaches you how to use your hands or nails or feet or shins he's like hey go in your purse and throw some change at him like that is literally (laughs) the coins (laughs) he literally said just like throw coins at him like just a handful of coins like you you took the fucking like the yen throw ability in like a ninja game or something. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. He was he was preparing people for being uh, attacked by a hardcore dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yeah. like pick up that change. He'll, he'll be forced to pick up the change. <laughs> like a fucking shitty ass vampire. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, purse items oh, wow. was first, which is dumb. Um, there. Are, I don't know. He. I feel like he also really stretches the one hundred and one way weapons oh. thing. Because oh, absolutely. So there are a hundred and one entries. I will say I counted, but um, included in those entries in the hundred and one are your body parts, which I think. But bo- no, like that's not implement weaponry. That's not a statue or a table or whatever. So I feel like that was a little fucked up. Um, and then. He kind of use, does the same things. Uh oh, what Paul? Paul, what did you find? Uh oh, 
I'm sorry, I just got to the biting part. <laughs> the picture's amazing. Oh yeah, the, right. there's a pic- the final uh, picture is a picture of a woman biting a man's neck, and it's very unconvincing and hilarious. Uh, well, and by the way, all these photos will be up. I will put as many of them up as I can. Um, I'll probably put an article up on um, our website on terriblebookclub.com. I can put up a few of them on Instagram, but it's going to be too annoying to put all of them. So I'll try to um, to add an article to the website, uh, to like, like a blog post or whatever, so you can see all of these and see what we're talking about. I think my favorite one in the body fighting section is there's one that's it's involving the foot or something. It looks as if the woman is jumping up and then like kicking from like a... Uh, a four foot height at least downward onto a standing man or something with like, oh yeah knees. yeah it's very weird it's like i mean i guess maybe if you're like a dancer or something or you're a musician and you're on stage yeah this is a move i can use to defend myself when i'm on stage and some guys get handsy with me i can just poke him in the eyes with my toes through my boots or whatever why don't you use the microphone stand as an implement <laughs> weapon everything's a weapon paris yeah everything's a weapon yeah that does yeah, Paul, Paul makes a, a good point. That picture does look like she's, like, leaping at his yeah, face. Yeah, this, uh, the lady who can do this jump kick can just leap over a fence and leave him in the fucking dust. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, women can't do jump kicks like that, Paul. It's known in karate circles, physically as incapable. far as Rodney Rice told me. Yes, going to Rodney Rice, women <laughs> women are just armed with their purse. That's all they're armed with. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's an oh my god, yeah. One of the this one guy of loves it. one of the feet pictures looks like this guy's really enjoying being touched by a foot. He's like, mm, yeah, kick me in the eyes. Um there's, there's a lot of vaguely foot fetishy things happening in that section. Yeah, I so so like sorry, before we get interrupted by by Paul. Um hey, I'm gonna put the book down because the more I look at it, the the more confused I am. So one of the other gripes I have with this book, other than the fact that he includes just your body parts as implement weaponry the, which is not the last correct. thing that's the major thing yeah, to me yeah yeah so the, the order the order is bad the fact that he includes body parts as implement weapons and then i mean if there's someone else's body part great like if there's just like an arm lying around yeah that's an implement <laughs> yeah, weapon just, as like like sure defending but, your 101 weapons for women in the zombie apocalypse yeah exactly like if if you got some body parts lying around that aren't yours or like that were yours but came off your body sure that's an implement weapon but <laughs> Um, just your actual fucking hands attached to you? Like, no, that's just that's your hands. Um, and then he does this real nitpicky shit where he's like, oh, you can use a bracelet to defend yourself or an armlet. And I was like, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> the same fucking thing. Like, yeah, you know what? I mean, <laughs> it's like, and there are, there are a lot of things like that. Um, similar with like, um, the paper product section, he repeats himself numerous times like we already pointed out the gambit shit that he was advertising on page 53 where he was like you can slice a human body with a playing card i don't i don't know if he actually says that all right Uh, you know what paris i'm gonna give you the uh, he says all these different weapons and stuff but i can give you like a 10 sentence or less summary of every possible category of implement weapon ready if it's cloth you blind him or strangle him with it Right. If it's heavy and metal, you bludgeon him or drag it across his face with it. Sure. If it's paper, you can give him paper cuts with a quick paper thing. <laughs> if you have, like, your foot or your fist, just punch and kick him with it in the balls, especially. Um, what else? If you have something thin like dental floss, uh, put that around his neck. And if you have some Vicks, rub it on his dick. That's about everything, I think, covered in the book. Yeah, there's... there's... He really he really gets super granular here when I don't think he needs to. Actually, I take that back. He does recommend some fucking gambit shit. Um, quote, Do not underestimate the potential of inflicting physical damage with everyday paper items. There is actually a type of training in which students learn to throw cards from a new deck with stiff, crisp, sharp edges in such a way that they can penetrate the skin or even penetrate into the body. How, like... What is the belt rank in Taekwondo where you start learning that <laughs> shit? I don't know. He he doesn't suggest it's Taekwondo, but he does suggest it is a thing, which I call fucking bullshit on. That's that must fucking... have been yellow belt because I didn't get there. Yeah, it's bullshit. A point of order. Gambit also carried a huge fucking stick that he hit people with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. You know, don't forget your huge fucking stick. Sorry, <laughs> he's... Have one of those he... Sorry, Gambit is one of my least favorite X-Men. Gambit and Jubilee can fucking jump off a bridge together. I can't stand them. <laughs> What's Sorry. wrong with Jubilee? She's got fireworks yeah fuck off <laughs> it's like dazzler but worse god yeah i know i hate all of it um sorry but um the the paper section is also bad because it's just the same thing over and over again he's like use a 
the edge of a playing card. Use the edge of a piece of paper. No, Use Paris, like... <laughs> there's one crucial part that's way different from the rest. Oh, did right. you know? Did you know that a rolled up magazine is as strong as a tree trunk, Paris? Yeah, yeah. he says that a rolled up magazine or rolled up pile of papers, like I don't know if you have like a a lease or a contract or something on the table and you roll it up. <laughs> It's as strong as the tree from which it was taken from. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah. A That's rolled what up you magazine just wrote. is not like maybe a little sapling, maybe a shitty little sapling, <laughs> like not a tree. Listen, no, I wouldn't just let this guy write a book like that and say things he didn't scientifically prove, <laughs> would they? Uh, yeah, because he published this. <laughs> the, you know what? He is he is one of the uh, one of the the champions of self publishing because this was 1991, and the the. It, it's published by Rai Joe Productions, which doesn't exist anywhere His last else. name is Rice. He has a partner or something that has a last name that starts with Joe. Right, right, pretty exactly. simple. To figure that one out, Rodney. And no, Chris, you forgot, you forgot the... Uh, <laughs> Rodney. <laughs> you forgot the, uh, the second most... Actually, one of the most important things I learned from this book is that Men are scared of paper noises like a household pet. So if you need to <laughs> get true. them, if they're attacking you, just just rustle some papers in their face. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Like he actually recommends that. He says that the sound of rustling paper will startle an attacker and make them flee. So, all right. Uh let's do some applied science here. I all want right. you to kill me with this book. <laughs> <laughs> right now he does say that that book is a weapon he actually does say that and he's like if you've learned anything you'll know that this book is a weapon too yeah he's like actually he tells you you should keep this on your person at all times and I, to my uh my answer yeah, like, to that is like study it. have you seen women's clothing have you seen women's clothing we don't have pockets big enough for this shit for a whole fucking book <laughs> no way he's like keep it in your no, pocket Karen... it's like no you don't even carry have it in a scabbard, pockets. like like a like a katana. <laughs> yeah. Dude, pockets haven't been that big since Jinko. Oh, this no. was ninety one though. Is that the beginning of Jinko jeans? <gasps> it's all coming together. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, figured it out. Fine. That was like the one time they could keep that book on them. Yeah, I mean, per- perhaps if you had a very large coat and it had like big pockets in it, but well, that's why he recommends a big coat at the. He's look, he's covering to cover all your the slut base- legs. Get get yeah. your slut legs out of here and your slut wear. Listen, it's two two birds, one stone. Cover the slut legs, carry the ultimate weapon. This book itself. Uh, yeah, the spiral notebook. Paul pointed this out earlier, but he does actually suggest like take the metal spiral out of a notebook. And it's like. Okay, yeah, hang on, attacker. Can you pause for, like, a full 30 minutes while I <laughs> no, do this? No, this must be, like, that, that wind-up stage when, like, you know something might happen, but he hasn't started the attack yet. So you just have a notebook on you and just slowly start unwinding it in front of him. Yeah, and when he you asks you what you're doing... each other um, down from opposite ends of the subway car right <laughs> yeah. the showdown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I mean, there. this was 1991, so a lot of these are impractical for different reasons. Like, he's like... Use a phone book to attack someone. It's like, well, phone book. Or, books, uh, or yeah. a floppy diskette. Oh yeah, actually, shout out for the flo- shout out to the floppy diskette because that's how I found this book. So my friend Chris Hogan posted uh, the image of the floppy diskette defense on Facebook, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, this can't be real. This is probably just some like fake thing that someone made. And then I asked him, and he didn't know. So I did a reverse image search, and that is how I found this book. So thank you, Chris Hogan, for posting that. Uh, that's what led us here today, and I am very happy that we were Paris, here. Paris, I'm surprised after 54 episodes that you're not you like you're still unbelieving that this things could be real like this. Well, no, it's not. It's not my experience at Terrible Book Club. It's um. It's I don't know, Paul's seen something else now. Um, it's just my experience as a human being. I mean, people fake shit on the internet all the time, you know, so I just thought it was like a joke. But no, it's real. They do recommend um defending yourself with floppy disks and with uh like filing boxes and stuff, which I mean filing boxes, yeah, you'll still have those in an office, but floppy disks, probably not. Um uh, Paul is laughing because he found the uh the the plants and potted plants items. This girl um, hit him in the dick with a cactus. What is yeah, oh yeah, the shit? cactus dick attack. <laughs> How can I forget? Yeah, he does recommend um if you have cacti to use them. 
Which... You know what? The, be- <laughs> the best <sighs> home defense is to just have cactuses everywhere. Just yeah, nonstop it's... cactus everywhere you go. Yeah, it seemed like an odd choice because I, I don't feel like cacti are that common. Like, I... <laughs> No. Oh, you can totally, you can, like, buy them at, like, department stores and shit, right? Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, well, Home Depot, but that's that's more of, like, a householdy store. <laughs> um, I mean, videos, tapes, and CDs, telephone, oh, the telephone to the dick pictures are pretty good. <laughs> um, I can, I can just, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the book and tell you all of the implement weapons. Yeah, at this point, at this point. Self-defense calling for penis. <laughs> penis here. What can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got scarf, shoes. Oh God, I can't. She I can't. Put the, she put oh, the, the shoes, shoes on her hands like mittens. Yes. <laughs> yeah, put that's shoes the worst on your part. Like mittens. And it's it's like it's in not the, the shoe. It's not the shoe on your foot. It's the shoes on your hands. <laughs> yeah. I'll never see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. The ultimate self-defense technique. <laughs> we got we got eyeglasses, purse itself, uh, belt, coat, hat. Hair clips, gloves, sorry, I'm not fast enough, uh, undergarments, so this is like if you're already undressed, strangle him with your bra, which is the cover photo, actually. Oh, the cover photo. Which, we we should, uh, you know, I'm gonna get through the rest of them, and then we'll talk about the cover photo. I have so much practical advice. Just let me know when it's time for me yeah, to go yeah. my fucking screed. I think, I think yeah, we all, that, I think we all that should be the way we wrap this up after yeah. we list out all these the, these, these items uh, here. Okay, keys, nail file and clippers, license and cards, makeup applicator, coins, <laughs> sprays the and coins. powders, dental floss, lighter, tweezers, comb and <laughs> brush. Can, wait, can you stop on the lighter for a second where his recommendation is to just hold the lighter in his face? Yeah, like a regular ass <laughs> cigarette lighter. Like, what? All right, continue, continue. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to interject periodically. Uh, with the barrettes and hair clips, pendant or charm, earrings, bracelet, necklace, watch, brooch, armlet, badge, uh, which is a pin, rings, newspaper, books, magazine, spiral notebook, photos, phone book. Calendar, file folder, envelopes. <laughs> why is the calendar different uh, from yeah, like why, envelopes? Why are any of the paper products different? Hit it with know. every fucking month in the year. That'll show up. Uh, pl- <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> Car- Which is different from cards in your wallet and license. <laughs> Car floor mats. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just See, yeah, because you can just get that. Just pick that right up and bash someone with your floor mat. Uh, no mention of like your driver's license or anything that's objectively harder than paper. No, they did. They mentioned licenses and cards. I take everything back. This guy's <laughs> a genius. Okay. Uh, Seatbelt, ice scraper, plastic straw, ashtray, <laughs> light bulb and lens, cigar- car cigarette lighter, mirror, whisk broom, and Oh, wait. It's the mirror part? In the mirror part, the picture <laughs> is her completely removing, like, the rear view mirror. And also it mentions, like, hey, if you have this in your purse with you. As yeah. if you just took the mirror with you from the car. Uh, maybe that was a common thing to do in the early 90s, but I don't remember if that. If you look at the picture very carefully, her attacker is actually a Gorgon. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Just uh, make him look at themselves. He'll turn to stone. It's all yeah. over. Uh, stopwatch weights at the gym. Resistance bands also at the gym. It's a shame that women don't have any strength, so they can't actually pick up the weights to hit a man. <laughs> That would be actually amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, they have no manual dexterity. They can't figure any of that shit out. Um, Honestly, what are they even doing at the gym? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we also got floor work mats, so like a yoga mat, uh, gym bag, the bag itself. Um, how is pocket... that different from the purse defense? Can I just yeah, exa- ask how exactly. that's different from pocket radio or tape player? Gym bag. Why do you want to look at the different? I thought you meant like a heavy bag, like a no. hundred pound heavy bag. <laughs> no, no, it just that would, fucking... I mean, that would make more and more sense. Um, sprays again, towel, sweatband, analgesic rub. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Remember where that goes, right, yeah. Paris? On the dick. Curtain rod, light bulbs and lamps, dishes and decorations. Telephone, videos, tapes and CDs, plants and pots, tables and chairs, cushion, blanket or pillow. Clock or radio, picture frame. I mean, literally suggested Pen- a pillow fight. Yep. <sighs> yeah, Pens that's- and pencils, briefcase, umbrella. Uh, oops, sorry. Stapler, clipboard, calculator, computer diskette, 
Use a three and a half inch disc to strike or cut the temple. Quarter of a five and a quarter disc and folder being raked across the neck. Sorry, I had to Wait tell you that there. Wait a minute, Paris, Paris, huge oversight. He never mentions using the actual computer itself, especially <laughs> in the 90s when they were enormous. Yeah, seriously, like, if, if your choice is between bludgeoning someone with a fucking 40 pound computer or a floppy disc, like, the computer every time. Yeah. Um, Swinging the mouse like a fucking yeah, monster. like a wood flail. Oh, that, no, that's that's right. some shit I'd want to see out of this book. Is like some true like ninja true implement weaponry, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, file box push pin, which like yeah, that would suck. But like push pins are really short, and also, how are you gonna have that kind of precision when you're getting surprise attacked? He um, wants you to like gouge eyes out with like amazing reflex in all of these situations <laughs> the, with a lot the, of different things yep uh paper clip uh fingernails and fingers knuckles open hand forearm and wrist knee elbow foot shin uh also foot uh head <laughs> teeth. you know you're also foot um and then okay and then there's a miscellaneous section where he's like, these are regular weapons, and... This can be summed up with tasers, mace, and things that are secretly fucking swords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we've got the keychain... So- <laughs> we've got, we got the keychain knife, the lipstick knife, the cane, which is also a knife. Yeah, like a real escalation there. Also, can I ask, at what point, would, where do you draw the line? Why isn't he just saying, carry a knife or a gun? Like, also, it's a weapon yeah, too, yeah, right? Like- like- like, why isn't this book just called Buy a Gun? Like, yeah. end of the story. Um, belt knife. A uh, belt that's also a knife. Um, some of, okay, some of my favorite ones. We have stun gun, mace. Um, oh, okay. My three favorites are whistle. Yeah, just. <laughs> the classic rape whistle gets a shout out. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Shuriken. He's got a oh, ninja yeah, throwing shuriken. star sighted. As something you may or may not just find out in the world when you're being attacked, I guess. No, I think he's say- he's suggesting these are things you should carry. But even then, that's still a ridiculous yeah, at, assertion. At, at, at that point, why don't you just equip yourself with the katana and nunchucks at the yeah, same yeah, time? Yeah, seriously. Like, like, a shuriken is not a, a weapon that a fucking random lady should just have on her. Or any random person should just have on them. That's really weird. Yeah, dude, if you're carrying ninja stars, you... you you're already so far ahead of the game, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, though. My favorite, though. The metal fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. The whole back end of this book is honestly like he just saw some kung fu movies with, like, a geisha fighting with some weapons. And he just put all that shit in at the end, it seems like. Yeah, and I mean, Paul, Paul at first was like, oh, that's totally not real. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't sound real. I looked it up, and I guess there's, like, there's some evidence that perhaps... Metal fans were used as weapons in some period in Japanese history, but it's like, oh, but not... they're all so nice. You know, you'd think they listen to all that angry music, but most of the time they're really sweet. Oh, are you making a metal fan metal fan joke? Y- yes. Oh, yes, wow. I okay. Yeah, there. I have some other notes just from from dumb shit like, uh, my favorite. One of my favorite parts is when he's like he's talking about. Um, using a lighter as a weapon or ashes in the ashtray, and he says, "If you don't smoke, fake it." And I was like, "If you don't smoke, you're not gonna have any fucking cigarettes. So how are you gonna fake it? Like, I don't." I... Ask him for the cigarette, yeah. and then like grind it up in your palm and blow the tobacco at yeah, him that way. I, I don't know. This is how I prepare my cigarette. Hold on. Um, and, and and oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that he also thinks that umbrellas can pierce hearts. I'm sorry. He thinks. <laughs> Everything from a straw to an umbrella can pierce a heart, everyone. Yeah, this guy is uh, convinced that uh, the rib cage is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't exist. Like, anything can go into a heart if you just believe hard enough, <laughs> Yeah, honestly. I mean, he actually, we didn't talk about some of the images at the opening of the book. Um, I also want to read the intro. This episode is, like, all over the place. We, we did not do a good job sectioning this. Sorry, everyone. Um... So, that's fine. Honestly, this should be treated as kind of willy nilly because that's definitely how he treated how he came up with these it's weapons. It's so to the formatting of the book itself, really. Yeah, we're yeah. actually just possessed by the spirit of 101 Weapons for Women and Rodney Rice. <laughs> uh, so, towards the beginning, there's an attack situation chart. 
Oh, and yeah. it says that this chart illustrates a range of emotions an assailant and victim might experience, their intentions in an attack situation, and methods to carry out those intentions. And, like, question one for me is, like, why does this exist, first of all? Because it's not really... I mean, I think it's called a chart simply because it's not a piece of art and there are shapes on the page and words, it's, but, like, that's about as charity like... as you get. It's like a flow chart, but it isn't. But there's not like any branching paths or anything, so there's no, no like reason to fall like try to follow a line. It's just like, hey, the attacker is gonna feel angry, and so he will try to attack you. That's the chart. Yeah, and the victim is like. So obviously, I'll have to post pictures of this because this is visual, but. Victim and attacker are these two ellipses, and then from each ellipses are rays that say, like, the victim one says fear, panic, shock, and surprise, anger, helplessness. And then there's a dotted line that follows to the next ellipsis for victim, and around that ellipsis it says escape, get help, cooperate, show resistance, injure assailant. And then it continues to one last one where it says scream, run, manipulate, implement weapon, fake illness, talk, fight. And I just... Like, what is... I don't understand what the purpose of this chart is. I, I mean, like, yeah, I think I think we all know, in general, kind of how an attack goes down. The attacker wants to do something not cool to you that you are not cool with. And you are going to either cooperate or resist. And that's kind of it. So, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> that So, that's weird. And he has a couple of, like, I don't know, sort of biological charts... A vital points chart where uh, right in the middle of the page it says the human body is very easily injured. Which, like, I mean, yes oh, and yeah. no. Right? Like, like Doesn't sure. Doesn't he say that, like, the human human body is, like, one of the most fragile things in existence? <laughs> yes, it does. Like, amongst all animals, it's the human body that is the most fragile. Or something. Yeah, and it's like, okay, yeah, you know, we don't, we're not armadillos or whatever, but, like, I, I think that it's a little disingenuous to say things Pretty like, sure oh. I'm, a, I'm a little hardier than an ant, let's say, or perhaps, like, a jellyfish. Or... Sure. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think these... Like, okay, his major target areas are head and neck, heart, arm and wrist, groin. Honestly, <laughs> heart makes no sense, as we've already pointed out. <laughs> like, I, I mean, unless you literally have a knife or gun... I don't know what you're really going to do about that. That or, straw isn't getting in there, my friends. Um, or, or you know that Kill Bill 5 pressure point instant death technique. Oh, right. What is that called? The... He pretty much know. nailed it. I don't know. <laughs> Something no, like that. There's, there's a name for it. Um, the dim muck, the touch of death. Yeah, yeah that's basically what it was. Um, yeah, I mean. Should, sounds... we let, uh, should we let Paul off the leash at this point? I mean, if, if he wants to be. If he if he wants to run free in the forest with his other other martial arts brethren, because I'm I'm sure he has some things to say about what would actually be a a good book, perhaps, or what what should be covered in this book. Actually, considering, yeah, that that is true. I mean, considering you have you know well over a decade of martial arts experience and you work at a prestigious um, MMA fighting and martial arts gym, it would be good to hear what you think about what about if this makes any sense like showing resist like attempting resistance during an attack um using implement weaponry etc all right so i'll start off by saying that i deal with a rodney rice maybe twice a week <laughs> there's a rodney rice that comes to my gym talking about these mean streets and how <laughs> uh, i guess i could come here and uh learn this sport fighting but you know i'm already kind of a big deal i got i got to tell you i got to tell everyone right now who's listening you are not a big deal at all the mean streets are not meaner than a professional environment where people are trained to be fighters if you want to learn to defend yourself i'll say straight up first of all you're wasting your fucking time your first implement weaponry should be a pair of high top sneakers that you can run in. <laughs> no, you need to put them on your hands. You see, yeah, you yeah, put them that's on your the hands real, and no. smash the attacker's face. That's what Master Rodney told me. Yes. Is just put my sho shoes on my hands and kill. <laughs> yeah, I can count on my hands 
on a single hand, uh, like how many times I have been in a fight in out in the wild in my life. It's not a lot. And I was an idiot when I was a kid. <laughs> so that's saying something. Uh, de-escalation and keeping your eyes peeled and hanging out with like groups of friends. It goes so much further than panicking and carrying fucking throwing stars in your dress. <laughs> I mean, I will say, I think, I think we, um, we do need to say that Rodney at several points in the book does point out that like, Hey, you know, FYI, you got to make a decision about <clears throat> whether or not it's worth your while to defend yourself because it can be dangerous and it can put you at more risk. Um, and he does say other things like, Hey, this isn't a substitute for having proper self-defense tra- training, but you're a woman, so you can't do it, I guess. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, like he does, he does a couple of times, um, at least try to frame this in a little more of a rational, sane way, which I very much appreciate because as much as, you know, this book isn't my favorite and I, I honestly don't think it really needed to exist. Um, I do appreciate that he didn't go kind of whole hog on like, uh, now you can defend yourself. Go out into the world. Ladies, be totally fearless. And uh, because I, I think that um, even even people that take real like actual martial arts classes, I sometimes I worry that their instructors or sometimes not even their instructors, but just that environment that they're in where... um they all get this kind of what you were talking about, Paul, this sense that they're like, I'm a badass now. And they think that by having any training at all, or, you know, reading this stupid book or something is going to make them, um, more capable of handling a dangerous situation. And therefore, unfortunately put themselves in more dangerous situations as a result. Like, you know, if, if they're out with their friends and they see a fight happening, they're like, you know, when previously they would have walked away from it. Now they're like, oh, I can, I can hang with this. Like I have training now. And that, that's the kind of thing that I worry about with, um, a lot of, uh, like books like this and certain types of, um, martial arts. Uh, can I ask Paul a question? I'm yeah. all ears. Out of all those people that come into your gym, the Rodneys that come in, how many do you think are like so deep into this mindset of like, I'm going to learn how to be a badass that they, you can tell like they secretly like maybe a little bit want to be Batman. Uh, 100% of them, Chris. <laughs> oh, okay. wow. Really? I thought it would be like a small minority of like the truly dedicated, but you, it's really like you could see that in them that they'll be like, okay, I'm going to be able to take down crime this way. Oh, absolutely. And oh. I tell you what, most of them don't last long because your ego doesn't hold up behind this theoretical veil of the mean streets. And I've won every fucking street fight I've ever been in. Like, that's cool. Good for you, I guess. Uh, say anything you need to say here and now. But we live in a world uh, at the gym where you you prove yourself. It's a meritocracy every day. No one's had their ass kicked more times than a professional fighter. Um, and... Anyone who's ever come to my gym from a self-defense place, anything with self-defense in the title, has either washed out because their ego can't stand the fact that everything they learned was wrong, uh, or they're like, I cannot believe everything I learned doesn't work. I'm never going back. I feel so stupid. Those are the two outcomes. Right, and the reason that it often doesn't work is because a lot of martial arts or self-defense um classes don't offer resisting opponents so you have people who are just learning like okay move your arm here do this with your foot but they're never actually facing someone who's trying to fuck their shit up um so you know that i think that's the main thing like we've talked about that a few times yeah there's there's all kinds of justifications that they like to hide behind um and at the end of the day that doesn't bother me at all I don't give a shit what people do with their lives. Um, What bothers me is what we talked about before is that uh, this person who's taken six years of Krav Maga thinks that they're ready to fight a fucking mugger. Don't fight a fucking mugger. (laughs) Don't. Yeah. Don't go out there into the world with a fucking loaded gun in your brain (laughs) where you think you're going to save the day. Like, just chill, man. But the movie says that I can fight crime that way. If I punch things, good will happen. 
<laughs> yeah, I have I have tussled with my non-resisting friends in this karate class for a few years. Therefore, I can take on this street gang. <laughs> like that's not Look, how- Batman trained as a ninja for like, I don't know, 5 minutes in that movie <laughs> and he took out a whole crime syndicate. So, right. I mean, this fucking fool doesn't even think you should attack somebody's knee with an improvised weapon to help you escape. That's not even all. That's not even an option. He's like, hit him in the arm. No, hit him in the fucking leg and get out of there. But yeah, I mean, I I do get that he is trying to make people aware that like, hey, if you're in a really desperate situation, do whatever you can. Um, I don't know, but most people, most people freeze up, first of all, when they are attacked. Um, he, he actually does acknowledge that, and it is very common, so the idea that you're gonna be fucking Batman, um, is gonna, is gonna be sucked away from you almost immediately when you're attacked, because most people just freeze. Um, he was right about some other things as well, like he said that, uh, most women are attacked by people without a weapon, and I checked to see if those statistics were still true i mean because this was 1991 this was probably written in 1990 or 89 and you know it's like 30 28 years later um and according to rain which is an organization i'll talk about in a moment uh in only 11 percent of rape and sexual assault incidents uh is a weapon used by the assailant so he's right it is pretty rare that they'll have a weapon on them which is good right that that makes me more hopeful that at least someone who's attacking me doesn't have a gun or a knife or something else. Um, so, you know, in most cases, that's true. They're not going to have a weapon, so you have a greater chance of trying to escape, but it's... I don't know. It's it's like, okay, cool, I guess, but not not the most... Not the most helpful. Um, also, there's sort of the uh, uh, unmentioned part here that a lot of those attacks occur while the victim is unconscious. So, uh, you know, there could be a variety of factors in which weapon where you're like, this wouldn't be the, the best way to fend off an attack. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, like I said, I think a lot of things are taken for granted in this book. Um, I do appreciate, like I said, you know, some of the, uh, some of the clarifications he makes, but that's like, he makes those clarifications kind of like right at the beginning. And then most of the book is just these, you know, quote unquote, like techniques or suggestions as I'll call them. Um, so you there's a couple of there's a couple of like that. scenes that he describes of like oh how the there's like three little anecdotes that he writes about how like a fake woman and a fake attacker and how they got out of the situation with the implement weaponry. One is literally just there's a lady in an elevator and a guy gets hands on with her so she kicks him in the dick and runs away. Yep, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> I was actually planning on reading some of this. Oh, so sorry, sorry to skip ahead. No, there. it's fine. Um, the way that the book opens also, so I, I read the dedication of the acknowledgements, but the introduction starts, um, starts like this. The attorney repeated himself. Miss Evans, did you show any kind of resistance or give Mr. Johnson any clear reason to believe that you did not want to have sex with him? Of course I did. She responded hysterically. I've known him for so long. I thought he was my friend. I never intended. She was interrupted by the attorney. What resistance specifically did you offer? And and so like it just starts with this like kind of shitty victim blamey uh fictional thing where it's like it makes you believe like oh well you know if you freeze up or if it's a situation where you're coerced or drugged or something if you don't show resistance it's your fault. And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of gross." Like I don't I don't like how that starts like that's how this book starts Ooh. i think the attorney is purposefully supposed to be sleazy like that i'm un- but who knows with rodney's general attitudes towards women in the rest of the book right um yeah the the situational things are really weird too um i think the first one is the funniest though uh, let me see if i is it just one page it's it's literally just like those batman fantasies that i was just talking about yeah, except with the really lady is. just um yeah i'll, I'll read this one because it is really stupid May 1962, Irving, Texas. Even though it was early May, Ruth's suntan was just starting to turn a lush golden brown. After church one Sunday, she had nothing better to do than (laughs) change into her swimsuit, oil down, and toast in the afternoon Texas sunshine. The pool area was already just starting to get a little crowded. To avoid... Can you read this slower? (laughs) No. Would you like me to read this slower or faster? 
To avoid the rapidly rising noise level, she settled into a vacant corner spot and diverted her attention to the novel she was reading. The peace and quiet didn't last long, however. A party of noisemakers had made their way to Ruth's end of the pool. Trying to ignore them, she continued to appear deeply absorbed in her book. As the revelry drew closer, it became impossible for her to read and enjoy roasting in the sun. Ruth gathered her belongings and prepared to leave. As she rose from the lounge chair and reached for her beach robe, a burly man grabbed hold of her, picked her up, and threw her into the pool. (laughs) Ruth sputtered to the surface, adjusting her suit to make a decent emergence from the water. She quickly made her way back to collect her items, only to have the same brute repeat his performance. Hitting the water on her back, she felt a flash of pain along with her fear and anger. She made for the nearest ladder and climbed out, her newfound friend awaiting another opportunity to play his game. This time, Ruth was ready for him. (laughs) As he grabbed for her, she had no intention of returning to the pool, nor allowing his aggression to harm her. She reacted in the best way she could at the time by stabbing with her thumbnail into the baby's throat. (laughs) To her surprise, and his, blood spurted out. His friends came to his rescue, allowing Ruth to leave amid the confusion. Ruth later learned that her poolside assailant had to be transported to the emergency room for medical attention. She also learned that she could protect herself with a long thumbnail. She was never again bothered at the pool. (laughs) all right so like a couple of things i need to i forgot about that part where someone's just throwing women into the pool over and over and over again like that's a normal thing and like like, no one spoke up about it at all and so her way to resolve the situation was to fucking stab him in the throat with the thumbnail yeah the whole thing is very strange it's a very strange scenario i don't know if in the 60s or in Texas, it is common to throw women into pools. I, I don't know. Can I tell you what this actually reads like? Uh, a little segue here. No, sure. Not really. It reads like my experience uh, playing Sekiro lately. I've been doing that basically the past couple of days, and I've had a similar experience. You go up against this guy, he keeps doing the same shit to you until eventually you read his timing. So you counter just right and stab him in the throat with your thumbnail. And he has Oh to my god, am, am, I gonna, am I more resistant to sexual assault because of my hours and hours of playing Dark Souls? And from no, software. Sekiro's a totally different fighting style, Mitt Paris. You're going to have to totally get used to something different. Should have played Bloodborne. No. It would, have, it would have taught you how to shoot a guy with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway. Oh, um, no, Paris, you're over encumbered and you're fat rolling, so you're never going to dodge that. that uh, oh, no, I don't, I don't play fat. I play, oh. I play slim. Oh, okay. Play well, slim. as you should. As you should. Fast rolls. Only fast rolls. That's None true. Of this fat roll shit. That's not the way to play. Anyway, sorry, we're getting <laughs> real. This, this, oh, this whole book is this weird fucking good guy with a gun fantasy. Except it's a good guy with a like a fucking tube of lipstick and Herculean strength to <laughs> shove it through somebody's torso. <laughs> No, it's a good guy with a karate dojo and a willingness to write a book for the women that he cares so much about. Yes, those poor poor women. <laughs> he truly is a hero. Yes. Um, so this book is shitty. Don't read it. Don't fucking read it. Don't yeah, do I it. Think, I like, think we're it is, done it here. It is functionally useless as a self-defense manual. Uh, I guess it could be used, uh, as firewood or... <laughs> no, 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 no. I can frighten men with it because men are frightened yes. by the sound of rustling pages. Don't rustle it. Oh, no. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, Please scared. stop. No, it's I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, in any case, um, I got those statistics about um, whether or not assailants have weapons, and, and there are there are also other statistics uh, from RAIN, which is the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. Um, they are a very, very, very excellent organization. Um, Donate they operate, to them. They operate Please. the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Uh, you can even chat with them anonymously, like, you know, on the computer or your phone if if calling them is not possible. So if you're ever assaulted or have been assaulted and are seeking help, uh, they are the place to go. They don't charge you. It's free. Um, so, and yeah. if you don't need that help, maybe donate to them. Let them help other people. I have a monthly donation set up with them. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Um, cool. Yeah. You can also donate to them to help them out, uh, to help them with their like, uh, sexual violence prevention and, you know, resources for people who have been assaulted. Uh, but it, it, yeah. it's more useful than this book has been. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm so glad that I didn't pay a lot for this book for Terrible Book Club because it was really terrible. Um, I feel like I feel like there's uh, I, I thought there was something else I wanted to talk about. But um, I, I basically I guess I just wanted to end with saying, like, oh, 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 oh the cover of the book. All right. 
Well, you see, the cover of the book is a woman choking a man with her bra, <laughs> and we have a lot of questions about it. So, the woman's shirt is still on, but the man is, like, ripping it off, but somehow her bra is already totally off, and she has, she is using the bra to push this man away by the neck, which doesn't seem very dangerous to me. It's like a chin-neck combo, and also, it's like he's ripping apart the shirt at the shoulders, I thought perhaps it was, like, one of those dresses with, like, a low shoulder or, like, a cutout shoulder, and that's how she got the bra off. But I don't understand the the sequence of events in which she was starting to become attacked, the bra came off in her possession so that she could then put it over his face, but he's already ripped the shirt off. Yeah. After the bra came off, like... Yeah, it's all very confusing. I'm I'm also confused about the sequence here. Um, But, I mean, Paul pointed out that using a bra to like push someone's neck away is really dumb like you should try to wrap it around their throat and choke them right yeah i don't know what she thinks she's accomplishing other than ruining her bra that she (laughs) has fucking quick draw status like she got that off in a way i can't even fathom yeah yeah that's 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 (laughs) it's like that simpsons episode where grandpa takes off his underwear without taking his pants off and everyone's mystified as to how it works that's right you got a weird grandpa (laughs) No, the Simpsons. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Abe, Abe Simpson is pretty weird, but um, no, I guess I guess I just wanted to end with saying, obviously, this is a very serious topic, and violence, um, particularly against uh women of color and trans women, um, are the worst. And so, I know this is usually like a lighthearted show, but you know, remember that these are real problems, and we're not we're not laughing at the people who are having those real problems. We're laughing at this fucking book that thinks you can prevent that by using an earring on someone's face. Um, or some Vicks Vapo Rub. Or Icy Hot. Well, you know, whatever works. Yeah, so the way you would choke somebody with a bra or anything. <laughs> oh, okay, we're back let's to end this. On, let's end on this note. Let's end on this note. Uh, would be kind of a modified baseball bat choke. You can learn one of those at any place that teaches Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And you know what else they do? They compete against fully resisting opponents. So if you learn how to do it there, you will actually be good at it in real life (laughs) if you ever need to do it to someone. Oh, golly gee, sir. Thanks so much for that tip. (laughs) So, okay. Uh, Thanks, Paul, for that tip. But uh, anyway, I was just trying to say that obviously this is a, a very real and serious topic and like... If you have been assaulted in any way, whether it was sexually or not sexually or just just violently, or if you're being emotionally abused or whatever, please reach out to Rain. Reach out to law enforcement. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like, I don't know, law enforcement sucks a lot of the time, but it's better than not doing anything at all, right? Um, or at least you can at least reach out to Rain. You know, they're not a, uh, uh, they're not affiliated with the government or anything, but they're a pretty cool organization and they can help you. Um, but yeah, I think I think. Uh, the best advice that any of us could give is to just be aware of your surroundings, uh, which I think that Rodney talks about, but um, that's it's pretty important. Hang out with large groups of friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, none of us are like, well, I would say Paul's an authority on the matter, but Chris and I certainly aren't. Uh, but, you know, as a woman who has uh, to... Excuse me, Paris, I have a yellow stripe in Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> this dude plays Sekiro, so... Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much Batman already. But, yeah, right. Um, but, you know, like, as as a woman who has had to grapple with um, thinking about this my whole life and dealing with it constantly, yeah, it is a real problem. And I can I can speak to the actual fear that I feel going out just about any time, anywhere, you know, I pro- probably because I grew up in a town that was really unsafe and had a high incidence of uh, physical violence and rape, actually some of the highest in the state. So, um, I, I mean, and I would get ca- I I've been catcalled since I was like ten years old. Like, you know, people, uh, people always constantly uh, like presented themselves as, um, I guess, potential attackers to me uh, where I grew up. And you know, now I live in a, a safer area. You know, the Greater Boston area is fine. It's pretty I mean maybe it's more dangerous than like fuck you Kansas or Cornfield Iowa or whatever but um Ah yeah. the rolling plains of fuck you Kansas <laughs> Yeah I sorry I couldn't think of a city in Kansas <laughs> Scenic fuck you Iowa <laughs> <laughs> Oh you know those states I forget exist like Nebraska I forget Nebraska I'm sorry Nebraska you're like going through some hard times right now and here I am forgetting about you Oh man Come check out Eat a Dick Oregon <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Oregon's a, a real state. <laughs> Nebraska, though. <laughs> Sorry, Nebraska. God, I you know I feel terrible because right after I said Nebraska, I realized it was like I said it was because Nebraska's like underwater now. Nebraska's like part of the ocean now because they're they've been hit with so much flooding, and I feel really bad for making fun. I'm sorry, Nebraska. Blow it out your ass, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I can't get, I can't, you two are not letting me get serious. I'm sorry, everyone. <sighs> All right. Well, I guess since I can't get a word in edgewise about uh, this being serious and a, and a needed topic for discussion and contemplation. Uh, thanks to Paul for being here with us today and lending some uh, you, valuable Paul. insight from the world of real martial arts. Uh, thanks also to my friend, Chris Hogan, who posted the images from this book on Facebook, which is, uh, how we got to read this thing today and do this episode. Of course, thank you as always to our loyal Patreon supporters. Those are Dari, Greg, Will, Veronica, D, Jared, Lynn, and Sinla. You all fund this show and make our reading of potentially terrible books possible each and every month. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Uh, speaking of Patreon, we're only about $7 away from our next goal. So if you want to give us easier access to books, get some terrible book club bookmarks in production eh, and watch special video segments of us doing some dumb bullshit you can head over to patreon.com slash join slash terrible book club and become a patron you can enjoy lots of extra content including some tracks of me and chris watching movies or tv show companions to books we've read on the podcast um and a few and some other stuff uh the latest full movie we watched was the super mario brothers movie to go along with episode 53 or 52 i forget um and then there's also Terriblo's Torture, the first video segment that we did where we did kind of a like uh, sort of game show comedy thing. And you get to see us in our full human forms. So if you're into that, you can check that out. Um, lastly, we do like when people say hi and interact with us. So, you know, reach out on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, Facebook, whatever. You can send us an email, uh, terribleclub at gmail.com. That's how you get those suggestions to us and talk to us a little bit. Um, if you're not using the Radio Public app to listen to podcasts, we recommend that you do. Um, personally, I really like the Radio Public app. I use it. It is my podcatcher of choice. But uh, we also recommend it because if you listen to Terra Book Club on there, it actually generates passive income for the show. Because each play gets us like two cents and then we get a dollar bonus if you listen to three episodes in a row, etc, etc. So it's a very nice app. Check it out. Um, oh, I already said lastly, huh? Well, guess what? Lastly has three parts. The last part to lastly uh, is is that if you haven't reviewed the show anywhere, please do so. Just a couple kind words um, or or truthful, perhaps harsh words, also fine uh, on on wherever you know, like iTunes. We're, is we're cool. always trying to improve here. We're trying to sharpen our blades every day. Yeah, for self my, defense film... against <laughs> podcast attackers. Just trying to fill my purse with shurikens. Just trying yeah. to be real prepared out there. That's where the that's where the patron money really goes. Talk about the element of fucking surprise. If you have a purse full of throwing stars. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> What's up? <Yeah. laughs> no. I'm trying to spike my drink. I'll spike your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Well, this episode was a disorganized mess. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm real sorry. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Much for like the book itself, Paris. Oh, yeah, you're telling me. Um, Oh, actually... I'm sorry. Last has four parts. Uh, I I forgot to I forgot to mention. finally. Lastly, at the end. In summary, <laughs> yeah. overall, um, no. I just wanted to briefly mention that our next two books are going to be patrons' choice episodes because two of our patrons have called upon their our their debt or our debt to them. Uh, so the next two will be selections from listeners. So uh, yeah, get ready. I can't wait to see what you've done to us. Yeah, seriously. Um, I'm I'm terrified. I already I've already seen one of them, and I'm I'm not not looking forward to it. Not looking forward to it. Great, great. Yeah. All right, Paris. With that, uh, we're signing off. Uh, use a terrible book to beat someone to death. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, terrible book club listeners, always armed, always armed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paris. Goodbye. <gasps> Bye, Chris. Travel with a roaming band of vigilante feminists with baseball bats everywhere you go. <laughs> I guess that's your goodbye. <laughs>